Hello everyone. Welcome to my series of lessons on the physics of sailing. First, I need to state my standard disclaimer. These videos are for educational and explanatory purposes only and are only intended to introduce basic topics for beginner cruisers in light to moderate wind conditions. They are not intended to guarantee your safety on the water. Nothing, including these videos, can replace taking accredited courses covering all aspects of basic cruising from qualified and experienced instructors, and gaining experience by starting slowly and increasing your knowledge and experience over time. You are responsible for obtaining a marine weather forecast and limiting your activities to weather conditions within your own level of experience and ability. When you go out on the water, you are enjoying yourself at your own risk. In the last lesson, we saw how to add and subtract arrows, or vectors. In this lesson, I'll be using vectors to explain how the wind drives a sailboat forward. In aviation, it's called lift. We need to understand the physics of how a sail functions in order to understand the basic principles of sail trim, which is the subject of my next lesson. Lift, and drive in sails, is actually a complicated subject because it involves the flow of a compressible gas, which is air, of course. But in a nutshell, to generate lift, we need to deflect a smooth flow of air through an angle. But why? To understand that, we need to understand Newton's third law of motion. You've probably heard of it. It says, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. It's like this. We know you don't try diving from a canoe. You'll just push it straight out behind you and fall flat on your face. The action is you pushing off the canoe to dive forward into the water. The reaction is the canoe being pushed out from behind you. Perhaps a more familiar example of Newton's third law of motion is a rocket. The gases ignited in the engines expand and flow downwards out through the nozzles. This is a change in the velocity of the expanding gases directed downwards. That is the action. The equal and opposite reaction is the force accelerating the rocket upwards. Now keep this in mind. The important words here are, the action is a change in velocity of gases directed downwards. So the reaction is the force pushing upwards. Okay, now let's look at an aircraft wing. A wing is mounted on an aircraft with an angle of attack to the direction of straight and level flight. This is the wing's angle of attack, and that angle of attack forces the airflow to be deflected downwards. To see how this generates lift, let's look at the vectors. Here, vector A is the initial velocity of the airflow as it approaches the wing. Vector C is the final velocity after the wing has deflected the airflow downwards. This isn't exactly accurate, there's some turbulence and vortex shedding, but this is the overall net effect. So, vector A plus a deflection in the airflow vector B equals vector C. Vector B is the change in velocity of the airflow directed downwards. Vector B is the action, and the equal and opposite reaction is the force upwards that we call lift. So it's the same law of physics that accelerates a rocket. It's Newton's third law of motion. Okay, so how does this apply to a sailboat? We can see that by overlaying a sailboat onto this diagram. A sail also deflects the wind through an angle, but in this case, it's a horizontal angle. Here, your jib sheet pulls the leech of your sail into the oncoming airflow, allowing the sail to present a profile to the oncoming wind. The sail deflects the airflow through a horizontal angle. Again, the initial wind velocity vector A plus a deflection vector B equals the final wind velocity vector C. Vector B is the action, and the equal and opposite reaction is the force that drives your sailboat forward. Now, the actual airflow over the sail may look more like this. There's turbulence and vortex shedding towards the end of the sail. You definitely don't want to be sailing in the dirty wind left by another sailboat. But these vectors show the overall net effect. Now, if you're a little in doubt about this, you can try it for yourself. When you're driving down the highway, try putting your hand out the window flat like this. Then, start to increase the angle of attack to the wind flow. 
You'll feel the upwards force on your hand very quickly, even though your hand isn't shaped very much like an airfoil. Okay, so that's lift. But one thing I haven't talked about is the so-called Venturi effect over the upper surface of an airfoil. There's an argument that the air accelerates over the top of an airfoil to generate a low pressure region that essentially sucks an aircraft upwards. And the argument continues that sails are shaped like airfoils, so it's the same Venturi effect generating drive in your sails. But there are some problems with this explanation. First, sails are flat sheets. They don't look like airfoils at all. And second, stunt planes seem to be able to fly upside down very well with inverted airfoils. Let's look at how a stunt plane can fly upside down. As we saw, the wings are mounted on an aircraft with an angle of attack like this in order to deflect the airflow downwards. So a stunt plane flying upside down like this isn't going to be able to maintain altitude in straightforward flight because here the wing will deflect the airflow upwards. In order to generate lift, a wing has to deflect the airflow downwards. So to maintain altitude, a stunt plane has to fly with a nose high attitude like this so that its wings can deflect the airflow downwards. Now I'm exaggerating this diagram, but that's so you can see the effect. And this certainly is not a very efficient configuration for flight because an airfoil's shape and angle of attack are designed to maximize efficiency for normal upright flight. But this is how a stunt plane can fly upside down for short periods. Okay, there's one more question. What will detract from an airfoil generating lift or a sail generating drive? It's turbulence. If there is turbulence in the airflow, we lose all those nice deflection vectors that represent the action in Newton's third law of motion. And if there's no action, there's no equal and opposite reaction. The shape of an aircraft's wings are designed to minimize turbulence in flight. And in the next lesson, we'll see how we adjust sail trim to minimize turbulence in the airflow over a sail. Okay, so that's the end of this lesson. I hope that was all clear. In my next lesson, we'll apply Newton's third law of motion to drive the basic principles of sail trim. But if you ever see a video where NASA engineers say that the airflow accelerates over the top of an airfoil and the wind doesn't just push a sailboat forward, keep this in mind. <sighs> yes, it does. I hope you enjoyed this video. These videos are all the lectures I give on board my Cruise and Learn trips for the basic, intermediate, and advanced cruising courses for the Sail Canada course standards. And hey, to all you instructors out there, feel free to show these videos to your students if you think they're useful. Thanks everyone for watching and stay safe on the water.